now because um, it's so good what God is doing in these seasons that we've been walking through and walking in. It's just tremendous. We're in December and we're in the heartbeat of the uh, you know last couple of uh, you know epitones of the year and just in full gear and, and fascination and orchestration and God's abundance and His movements. The way God's just been ushering in such victorious overtures toward us it's fantastic and we just thank god for all of that and uh, you know god you know, loves a, a thankful and cheerful uh worshiper they that worship him must worship him him in what spirit and in the truth so when you're in the truth and you're walking in the spirit how can you be anything less than a worshiper right and so uh, those that are sidelined or, 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 or have been checked and those that have been uh, kind of um, moved over to the side of it haven't found that place of worship and praise uh, before Almighty God uh, because a lot of it has to do with what they know and what they don't know. And how many know that knowledge is power? Yeah. And when you have the right knowledge, you can have the right frequency. You have the right momentum and you'll have the right energy. God wants us to have God energy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, I like what it says in Romans 12, 12. I see 12, 12 a lot on the clock. When I look up at the clock, it's 12, 12 all the time. But it says, um, if the apostle Paul says here, let your hope keep you joyful. Wow. Let your hope keep you joy filled. Let your hope keep you joy. And I've learned this. If you don't move on with God and learn new levels of obedience and learn new levels of following him, what happens is you get sidetracked, you, you lose momentum, and you lose uh, your love, and you lose your luster, and you get yourself in filibuster. And what happens is then you're, 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 you're sidelined, and you're living a sidelined life rather than an adventurous life full of the of, of heaven and full of the joy that the Son of God brings through the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. So it says in Romans 12, 12, let your hope keep you joy-filled or joyful. Be patient in troubles. The only way to be patient in troubles is to have your heart filled with joy, trusting God. And knowing that God is a God of deliverances. God is a God of deliverances. Ooh, hallelujah. I love that, don't you? As a matter of fact, his angels congregate. They camp around about us to do what? To deliver us. And in other words, that means they're living with us and they're encamped around about our dwelling place. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Wow, that's just, it's, 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 it's just stupendous and tremendous. And then in Psalm 44, 4, it says, Thou art my king, O God, command deliverances for Jacob. Thou art my king, O God, command deliverances for Jacob. Through thee, through thee we will push down our enemies, and through thy name we will tread them under that rise up against us. Hallelujah. For I will not trust in my bow, neither uh, shall my sword save me, but thou hast saved us from our enemies and put them to shame that hate us, have hated us. And now look what it says in verse 8. In God we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. In God we boast all the day long and in thy name we praise it forever. So who's the overcomer? A praiser. A worshiper. All day long boasting. It says we boast all the day long. We boast in God all the day long. And, and people that have lingering thoughts and, and listful thoughts and lifeless thoughts have not really stepped up to the plate and really made God as their source. They, they don't walk by faith. They walk by uh, how much they have in the bank. They, 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 they walk, walk, out, walk, walk by what is in the budget. They're leaning on the little bit they have. And expecting the Almighty God to live at that level. See, God's not going to live at that level. God may let you live at that level, 
But he's not going to live at that level. You're not going to have the fire, the force, the power. You're not going to have the energy, the synergy. You're not going to have the uh, connectedness. You're not going to have the union. You're not going to have the intimacy, the fire that comes from our mighty God. If you don't walk by faith, walk in the truth and, and, and are enlightened. Hallelujah. That is so powerful. Um, and so it, it says here, it says in, in Romans 12, 12, let your hope uh, keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. There it is. Pray at all times. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your requests known to God. Hallelujah. And the psalmist is encouraging himself here. And he says in Psalm 43, 5, he says, why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? He says, rather, I will put my hope in God. And once again, I will praise him, my Savior, and my God. Yeah. Psalm 43, 5. He switches modes. He goes from a sad mode to a hopeful mode. Yeah. Amen. Instead of talking about his troubles, he begins to praise God for his power to be a Savior. And to be God. Can you, how many, how many know it's time for us to begin to praise God like that and switch modes? Amen. Hallelujah. I like what it says in Proverbs 23, 18. It says, surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. I'm telling you, God is going to keep our expectation level and our hope level, uh, high and God is not going to be let it chopped off. Amen. If you really serve God and love God with all your heart and you're following him with everything that's within you and your strength and in your position in life, you know what? Your future is going to be great and your expectation will not be cut. Hope is expectation. How many are expecting wonderful things from God? How many are expecting wonderful changes from God? How many are expecting wonderful windfalls from God? How many are expecting wonderful deliverances from God and healings from God? Hallelujah! Keep that level of hope and expectation open and don't ever let it be shut down. You know, the psalmist said in Psalm 39, 7, he says, And so, Lord, where, where do I put my hope? He says, My only hope is in you. My only hope is in you. I mean, we have a lot of people come and go, and they've got in good insurance plans. They've got good doctors. I mean, they, they have good hospitalization. They've got all the benefits you can possibly think of. And I wonder, I wonder well, a lot of these people, how do they get all of that? I don't have any of that. I have assurance. Not insurance. Assurance. Our doctor makes hospital calls. It's called Dr. Jesus. Can you say Amen. Our doctor make hospital, and he's called the, the great physician. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't have to check in and check out of a hospital every time I have a pain here or a pain there. Or something's going wrong or something looks bad. Or, or even if I'm in bed and I can't get up and can't get out. You think I'm going to call the doctor? No, I'm going to call Dr. Jesus. Amen. I mean, you know, it, my only hope and expectation is in him. I'm not putting people down that do that. Believe me, I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying it's for me and in my house. Amen. And we get in a tight spot financially. What do we do? We just untighten our money belt and start sowing more money. Can you say amen? Untighten the money belt. And I said this before service. Let me just say it again just to reiterate it. Last week the Lord spoke to us on Monday because we've been tithing for 18 years since I've been in Dallas. But, and we've sown more uh, big seed offerings since March. Uh, than we have in the whole history of, of our ministry. And we've had fewer people in the house because of the corona conundrum, the corona syndrome, whatever you want to call it, uh, epidemic or pandemic or whatever you want to call it. But if you give it a name, you give it power. Hello? Yeah. We don't like to keep repeating it over and over again. But anyway, so the Lord put it on our heart, and, you know, we just got a 2020 Kia uh, with 6,000 miles on it. Got a tremendous deal. We sold $1,000 under the Lord to help us find it. And you know what? I went to Panera Bread Shop, 
sat down for a piece of bread and, got, I, I, and I felt led to go stretch stretch my legs. I went out and walked around after I sold the thousand dollar seat to try to find the car instead of going all over the Metroplex, getting on all the websites and trying to look uh, locate a car that is it will service us and be serviceable, and walk over uh, uh, two buildings to a, a a car lot dealership, a, a, a Ford dealership here in Mesquite, Texas. And I walked up and looked at one Jeep and turned around and I and there was a salesman. He said, "We're looking for." I said, "I'm looking for you know, a, a kind of a just a car to drive around town in, or something with low miles." He said, "This is it right here." I said, "What?" And he pointed to the Kia, twenty twenty thousand Kia with six thousand miles on it, only six thousand miles on it, full warranty, full blown coverage. And he, he said, "I said no problem." No problem. So we went in to sign the paperwork. I said, how much do I owe you? He said, nothing. So I walked out of there with the keys to the Kia. Didn't pay a dime. Left there. So how many know sometimes it's good to, to, to allow the, the bank to give you some money? Now, God doesn't want you to become a slave to money. He doesn't, you know, because the borrower's servant to the lender. But uh, he wants you to go ahead sometimes and take money. So we took that money. Uh, interest free and um, went home well last Monday as I was praying or last week when I was praying and then Monday we had the event but I was praying and, and God, God said I, I, I hear what you're saying in your mind you want to put so much down and pay down on that Kia and you want to put so much down on it but he said what would happen if you took like two thousand dollars instead of putting it paying it down Send it up to God. Send it up to me for an offering. Send it up to me for send it. Send it up to me for an offering, and let me leverage that car payment for you. Hallelujah! I got so excited about that. I said, "This is God. I want to hang on for a couple of days," and it never went away. And then that Monday, last Monday, I said, "We're going to do this." Amen. And so Tuesday rolled around. Amen. We got the routing number and the account number, and we called up our, the major ministry that we sow seeds with and talked to them. And instead of the secretary actually praying over us after we sowed that seed, she said, I'm going to put this on the pastor prophet's desk, and I'm going to let him personally lay his hands on this seed. How many know when you do the right seed, when you do the right thing, and you start bumping up, and you start believing God, and you start moving up in God, supernatural things are going to happen. Supernatural raiments are going to take place. Supernatural happenings are going to be activated in your life. Can you say amen? When you start walking by faith, amen, instead of what you know in your logical mind, and start walking by obedience to the Holy Ghost, God will do some major things. Can you say amen? My God, hallelujah. So just as a catch-all, just it, it hasn't even happened yet where that big payoff, we're believing by one payment or five payments for that the car to be completely paid off instead of going like how many months they want you to go to pay every, every week, every week, every week, every month, every month, every month, or whatever. So... The amazing part about that was this week we got a letter from we have we have put put our taxes on our house in arbitration because we feel like the taxes have been too high. As a matter of fact, uh, they've been they've been pretty high, like three thousand dollars every every year, and it never gone down in the history of the time that we've been making payments and having to make pay taxes on that house. And but did you know that that letter, when it was opened, Diane opened at the house. She looked at it. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. She said, my God, this must be an installment because it's only $1,000. It went from $3,000 to $1,000. Never in the history of the house has that tax been less. It dropped $2,000. Amen. And we sowed that seed to God not even toward the house. We sowed it toward the car. But God just threw in an extra something and proved to us that he's in charge and he's large and he can make it happen. He can change the condition and position in your life. No matter what, if you start dealing in the higher numbers and forget about, forget about 
budgeting everything. If you're gonna if you're gonna work out a budget, you're gonna stay in budget the rest of your life. The way to get out of budget is start sowing some major seed. There was a day and there was a time that I I myself was on governmental aid. I got governmental help for a period of time. But my my life was listless. It was lifeless because I didn't get anywhere with it. But I I did recover from some things I went through uh, in my personal life. And God healed me. But I knew that I had to get off that government assistance. Because if I didn't, I was going to fall back and continue to rest and rely on government assistance. And I would mute God's assistance. Can you, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Some of you got to know what I'm talking about. My God, hallelujah. Amen. It's time for some people to get on God's assistance program. God's provisional plan of prosperity. It's time for some people to wake up, stand up, and get up, and move up. Hallelujah. And do what God wants them to do. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 You know, he is working. Everybody say he's working a major work right now in my life. Say he's moving in a major way in my finance. He's moving in a major way in my lifestyle. He's moving in a major way in my existence. Hallelujah. You can't outdo God. Hallelujah. It's time to praise him. Time to exalt him. Time to lift him up. Time to give him glory. Time to talk about his story and what he can do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to brag on God. Anytime God shows up, I'm going to brag up on God. I'm going to brag on God. You know, Lamentations. Lamentations 324 says, The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. Says my inner being. Therefore, I shall hope in him. You know in your inner being you weren't born to be broke. You know in your inner being you weren't born to be poor. You know in your inner being you weren't born to go window shopping. Can you say amen? You know in your inner being you were born to have the best because he is the best. Jesus Christ is the best. Can you say he's the highest, the chiefest, the most prolific, the most profound, the most astounding that we've ever met. And he can do anything but not do miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to slice it and dice it and just get it out there. Let you know, you know, Job 8.13, so are the paths of all that forget God. The paths of all that forget God. The hypocrite's hope shall perish. The hypocrite's hope shall perish. The paths of all those that forget God. See, that's it. There's paths of people that are on right now that they've forgotten God. And the hypocrites have their own paths. And the Bible says their hope shall perish. Their expectation shall not, thou shall cease. But in Job 8, 14, it says, Whoso hope, uh, who, whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust is like a spider's web. Talking about the people that have, uh, are on erroneous ways. They're on felonious ways. They're, they're on hypocritical ways. They're on ways that forget God. It says in Job 8, 14, the next verse, it says, Whose hope shall be cut off, whose trust shall be like a spider's web. Spider's web. Whoo. I mean, do you get nervous or is it just me? When I feel like that I'm getting painted into a corner, when I feel like life is getting too big for me, you know, do you, do you get nervous when you feel like that somehow uh, you're on the downside of, of life and you should be on the other upside of life? Do you get a little nervous and upset when you just see things traversing and, and tracking around you that just don't seem kosher and it looks like you're going to be uh, stormed out, taken out, moved out, shut down, broken down? Amen. You're going to be you're going to be hit with a. a What's that word I want to call it? Uh, I, I want to say hanger name, but that's not what I'm trying to say. But anyway, it looks like your life's going to get blown up. I get nervous like that. Amen. When I get nervous like that and I begin to see things, I begin to lay down or get in a position where I can just meditate on God. 
and meditate on the and begin to think about musing the scriptures and begin to pull up the scriptures and begin to remind myself of who God is and what he is and, and what he can do. Ah! Hallelujah! What he can do for you! Glory to God! If God be for me, who in the world in this life can be at disadvantage against me? Can you say amen? With the Lord on my side. What can men and women do to me? Praise God. Hallelujah. If it hadn't been the Lord, what would I have done? Praise God. Hallelujah. But my God, and then and all of a sudden I wait for that Holy Ghost to kick in. And when that Holy Ghost anointing kicks in, and I begin to pray in other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance, and I begin to pray in that deeper inner well in my belly, and I begin to pray, things begin to shape shift, things begin to change, things begin to rearrange. The atmosphere begins to take on a whole new personality. Can you say amen? My God, my world turns inside out and upside down. Hallelujah. I don't have a frown anymore. I've got a crown, not a frown. Hallelujah. My God. I mean, you know, I like what he says in, uh, uh, this is, I'm feeling the fire up here. So, so, God's going to do something for somebody. I guarantee God's getting, he's in the works and doing something for somebody right now. Give the Lord a hand say, God's doing something for somebody right now. He's doing a work right now. Amen. And I, I, my God, I feel that. Oh, oh, hallelujah. You know, Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Amen. Instead of disgrace, instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. What are you praising God for? What are you being glad about? What are you rejoicing about? God's shifting and moving you right into your inheritance. Can you, he, he, moving you right into your inheritance so that you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Can, everlasting joy will be yours. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There it is. There it is, now, you know, my beloved, the, the man of God, the apostle, uh, friend, and, a, and just a wonderful person, uh, uh, Dr. Leroy Thompson Sr. from Darrell, Louisiana, who is just an amazing, amazing man. I, I talked to his office, he's 80-some years old, and said, it, it looks like he's getting younger every month. Absolutely. He's going the other direction. He's getting younger every month, not older. He's getting better. Can you say Amen. Glory to God. I feel that too. I mean, some, I mean, sometimes you feel old and tired and worn out and listless and lifeless. But when the Holy Ghost hits you, when the Word of God gets in the middle of it, when your life begins to get infused by God, I mean, all that stuff falls off. All that stuff just drifts away. All that stuff just, just cannot remain on you. Can you say amen? That energy, that Holy Ghost fire, that anointing, that animation will drive you with new conviction, will drive you with new ability, will drive you with new momentum, will drive you with new force, course and source. But, but he quoted the scripture in Romans 5, 17. He, matter of fact, he preached a message on it. He says, for by one's a man offense, in Romans 5, 17, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace. Everybody say abundance of grace. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. I, I preached 17 messages on righteousness in the, during the coronavirus. The abundance of grace, and notice it says the gift. You don't have to earn it. God will just give it to you. Grace is un, unearned. Grace is given without any stipulation. Righteousness is given without any stipulation. The gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. They shall reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Romans 5 10 says, Having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God, How's that going to happen? Well, there's a lot of ways that righteousness happens, but one of them it comes from our high priest, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. 
Melchizedek is called the king of righteousness. Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. So when, when, when Jesus deals with us, helps us come in over all week, we all are weak, we all have infirmities, we're, and, and we all have things that we need to be strengthened in. He is a high priest, is touched with our feelings of infirmity and our weaknesses. He knows where we live, and he knows what we're up against, and he knows what is the challenge in our life, and he knows what's trying to stop us and crop us from getting in to that place and staying there of his Immortal, immutable grace. You know, First John 2, 1. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. If anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Jesus Christ, the right. He's our advocate. Everybody say, the, uh, uh, the righteous one is our advocate. He's our advocate. Hallelujah. Who is this Jesus? Well, Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. Well, who created it? A lot of people don't even recognize what I'm talking about tonight. They don't even know what I'm saying. People just don't get it. And the reason why I know that, because it would be manifesting more in their lives. I'm going to tell you something. If you can't manifest something in your life, you're off track somewhere. There's got to be manifestation. You can't just sit back and just listen and just and not have, get anything, not have anything, and, and not bring anything when you've got the Son of God who created the universe in your heart, in your life. Can you say amen? You got to be able to bring something about. We're we're called sons of the Most High God. Sons of the Most High God. Woo! Hallelujah. Um, you know, if you look at Second Corinthians uh, five twenty one, it says God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So that, listen to this, in him we might become the righteousness of God. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We actually become the righteousness of God. Because we're in him. And when God looks at us, he doesn't see us for seeing him. He's perfect in every way. He stays that way every single day. And in every play that he makes, it's perfection. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why God told Abraham in, in Genesis 17, Walk before me and be ye perfect or be ye blameless. Because he was looking to his seed, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm on the cross all the way back into the book of Genesis. All those people were credited. With righteousness. Amen. And now after and beyond uh, the crucifixion. Amen. We enjoying it now. It's, it's total fruitfulness. It is total production in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We don't spend a day where God looks our way and thinks anything but perfection in our direction. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Colossians 1.10 or 1.16, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Talking about the Son of God, all things were created for him and, 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 and through him. If it's broken, the creator knows how to fix it. Can you say amen? My God, if it's, I said if it's broken, the creator knows how to fix it. Woo, hallelujah. Anybody that walks it a little bit and talks a lot just doesn't get it. You know, Hebrews 1, 2 says, but in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. 
whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he has made the universe. There it is. Through whom he's made the universe. The Son of God is appointed heir of all things. And he has spoken to us by his Son. If the heir, if Bill Gates is talking to you, billionaire, you think he, he wants to be moved and messed around by the little bit of uh, that you're trying to push around and trying to and trying to get through when he's got a billion dollars and you have barely making it just above broke just a little bit do you think that he's going to sit there and talk down to your level i don't think so he's probably going to throw out some nuggets i'm not saying he's he's born again or anything like that but i'm saying he's going to probably throw out some nuggets to you to try to get you to go higher to get you to see things the way they need to be seen and, and give you some things where you can operate in them and, and your life can get better and not worse or not more shallow or not more unproductive or not more unfruitful. Can you say amen? amen. But in these last days he spoke unto us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he made the universes. Thank you, Jesus. And you talk about praising and worshiping. You know, he knows everything before we even ask for it. He knows we have need of whatever we're going to ask for before we even ask for it. Proverbs 8, 30 and 31 says, talking about wisdom, it says, Then by him as one brought up with him. Now this is God, and we're talking about Wisdom being brought up with God when God creates the world and the universe. In Proverbs 8, 30 and 31, then I was by him, wisdom's talking here, and as one brought up with him, I was daily his delight, yeah. rejoicing always before, I was daily his delight, rejoicing always, but daily his delight, rejoicing always before. Wisdom is God's daily delight. Amen. And, and, and when you're in his consciousness of this power to be able to create and his power to be able to manifest and his power to be able to, to get through any sunken hole and to get through any soured life and any uh, deranged arrangement, how many know, hallelujah, that God, amen, in his wisdom can come down and make a play-by-play -play change in those kind of people's lives. Amen. Wisdom can come in and whiz through the situation and take the whole situation and move it to another situation that is far better than the one you're experiencing at the moment. Yes. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, God spoke to me and he told me, he said, I've created your life situation on earth. Just like I created life situation in heaven. I have created your life situation on earth. And I sent my son to give it context. And he said, work out of my son on earth. Because I created your habitat on earth. And work out of the wealth spring of my son until it carries you in to the wealth spring of heaven. I created heaven for you after you leave this life. But I've also created this earth environment for you to make it like heaven. To have heaven to go to heaven in. Can you say amen? Give the Lord a hand clap. Say amen, somebody. I've created heaven for you to go to heaven in. Thank you, Lord. So what do we need to do? After you get born again? After you know you're joint heirs with Jesus Christ? After you know that God has made you to sit with him? Everybody say, God has made us to sit with him. Let me just pull this up. Ephesians 2.6. Look what it says. And we'll read it from the New International Version. Made us alive with Christ when, uh, when we were dead in our trespasses. Made us alive in Christ when we were dead in our trespasses. It is, it is by her, it is again, grace. You have been saved. Why are we trying to earn everything? It's time to spurn what we're trying to earn. Can, 
It's time to learn how to let God get out of the way and let God have his way. Can you say amen? Amen. I told my mother, I said, I'm just a front person for God. My major work is to just stay out of his way. Just stay out of God's way and let him bring it the way he wants to pay. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 2, 6, 2, 5 made us alive with Christ even when we're dead in our trespasses. It is by grace you've been saved and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah, Berean Literal Bible says we've been seated together in heavenly realms. The New American Standard says he, he seated us with him. The King James Version says it made us sit together. Amen. Amen. You know, contemporary English Bible Version says he has given us a place beside Christ in heaven. The Good News Translation says, In our union with Christ, he raised us up with him to rule rule with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. We've been seated with him to rule with him, to sit by his side, that everything that he does, and to watch him work. Hallelujah. We've made to sit together in him. And it's so fantastic that people would rather work themselves two and three jobs than to let go of money and let God be their source. Let God, let God be their source. They'd rather work two or three jobs so they could hold on to their own personal money, wear themselves out, not enjoy anything in life because they're outside the house working all the time, overtime. Instead of putting something in God's hand that's significant and watch God make other plans. Jesus said in Luke 22, he says, I have appointed unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed one unto me. I have appointed. We can work out of kingdom relevance. We can work out of kingdom situations. and We can work out of our appointment with kingdom, the kingdom of God. It is God's God's. Uh, it is his pleasure to what give us the kingdom. It is God's pleasure to give us the kingdom. Fear not, little flock. It is my father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Paul prays in Ephesians 1.19. To know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. In Romans 6, 4 and 5, it says, even so we shall walk in the newness of life. Amen. The newness of life. God wants us to have Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in wide open spaces, where there are no traces. You know, Proverbs 10, 22, the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Everybody say, he addeth no sorrow with it. My God. People just can't believe it. They can't believe it because it's it, you've got to receive it as a child. God upsets the apple cart of pride. You cannot be prideful. You know, chide with God. Um, oh, my, I just feel this strong. Um. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, God could do anything but fail. Say, God is on my side. Say, God is working out my situation. Right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. But things are shifting right now. Things are changing right now. Things are rearranging right now. God is up to it. God is up to it. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap and say, God is up to it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's up to it. 
Amen. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Everybody say, might be rich. And again, it's, it's grace. For you know the grace of our Lord. There's grace, grace, grace is everywhere. In the middle of all the scriptures, it's grace. It's a gift of righteousness. It's a gift of grace. It's not something you earn. It's not something that you have to do. Not something that, that you have to get up there and just dot every I and cross every T and become a religious beyond yourself, beyond your ability to do. It's just abiding in Christ and knowing that you can never do it, but Christ has already finished the work. It's already done. Everybody say, it's already done. Everything you want is already given. Everything you want is already accomplished. Can you say amen? Come on, somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's already given. It's already done. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. My God, that's just amazing. Well, I could go on and on, but I think I'm going to close it there. I mean, you know, just a little bit. Uh, a little bit of sugar makes the medicine go down, the medicine go down, the medicine go down. A little bit of sugar makes the medicine go down in the most delightful way. But all you have to do is become a worshiper and a praiser. You know, in Psalm 44, I said it earlier. Verse 8 says, in God we boast all day long and we praise his name forever. Just learn to Tell people what God is doing. Boast in God. Boast in what he has done. Boast is what he's up to. Boast is about what he's going to do. And brag on him amongst the heathen. Amen. And then watch God just do what he does. Hallelujah. I mean it. Whew, hallelujah. Well, that's it. For now, I mean, I can go into more detail, but I, I made another video yesterday that's got, it's like 40 minutes, and it has all of these scriptures and more scriptures that will really get you all the way up to date. I want to talk about the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost does and how the Holy Ghost actually was given so that we might Walk into our inheritance and walk into the fullness of what Christ has brought and wrought. Give the Lord a hand clap. Say amen. That's the truth. And I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost teaches what Jesus was taught by the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father taught Jesus everything and gave Jesus everything. And the Holy Ghost will take what Jesus has been taught from the Father and impart it to you. When you walk in the Holy Ghost, you walk in ownership mentality. Ownership mentality. You're no longer going to rent. You're going to buy a house. Amen. You're no longer going to work on, well, out of credit cards. You're going to work out of cash. Gold, silver, and platinum. Can you say amen? Yeah. You're not, no longer just going to own one house. You're going to own some apartments and some housing complexes. Or maybe some shopping center complex. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you right now. Get an owner. When you have the Holy Ghost, you have ownership mentality. Right. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Say, I have ownership mentality. And let it work for you. Let it, let the Holy Ghost take you up to the next level. Everybody say, I'm going to let the Holy Ghost bring me to the next level. God is doing it. God is making it happen. You know, you, you remember, what was it, Isaiah chapter 11, all those things that the Holy Ghost was uh, on Jesus? You know, chapter 11, uh, talking about the branch. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, a, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Yeah. A stump will come up of Jesse. 
From his roots the branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of might. The spirit of knowledge. And the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. The Holy Ghost comes on you. lets you see things the way God sees them. And gives you the kind of vision that you need in this life. You will begin to delight yourself in the Lord like you've never been before. And from the core you will be bearing fruit. Your shoots will shoot up. Hallelujah. Rest will come on you. When God gives you counsel and gives you the might to back it up, glory to God, and knowledge opens up in your consciousness and your awareness, the way things, God is making things happen, the way things are being played out, the way God is bringing it, and you're right there with him strategically operating in a fundamental Holy Ghost way. Come on, can you say amen? Can't get better than that. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, it's all there for the taking. You don't have to wait around. You don't have to sit around. You don't have to be just looking, thumbing, uh, thumbing through your thumbs no. and looking out the window. No. You don't have to be wondering when things are going to. It's happening right now. Yeah. Let me give this last scripture on the Holy Ghost. I want to throw the Holy Ghost in here. Ephesians 1.14 in the Amplified Bible, the classic edition. Look what it says here. That that spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. Look at that. Yeah. A lot of people think this, the Holy Ghost is just jumping up and down and, and jerking and, 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 and working and jerking. You know, fall, you know, fall on the floor. I mean, that's all good. But that's not, that's not the significance of it. Those are all fruits of it, but that's not what the Holy Ghost is trying to do. Look, Ephesians 1.14, the Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. The first fruits, the pledge, the foretaste. Yeah, the down payment of our heritage. Yeah, our assurance. In anticipation of its full redemption. Our and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of God's glory. Complete possession of it. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the Passion Translation in Ephesians 1 and 14, in the last part, it says, it says, He is our hope, the promise of a future inheritance, which seals us until we have all redemptions, promises, experiences, complete freedom. And experiences complete freedom. Wow. Amen. Amen. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I mean, there's so much. I gotta stop. But there's there's two other verses. Let me end it with this. I'm talking about. I talked about grace today, and talked about how wonderful it is, how extravagant it is, how amazing, how free it is. God just wants to give it out to those people that will just take it. Ephesians one six. To the praise of the of his glorious grace. It's called glorious grace. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely has given us in the beloved. So grace is freely given us through the beloved Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 1, 7, 8, 12, 14, and 18, it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So he calls it glorious grace. He calls it the riches of his grace. How can you miss? It's impossible. Well, Father God, in Jesus' name right now, I did thank you. I'm going to close it out. Thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to talk about your way, talk about who you are, what you do, how you do it, and talk about how you can bring it like nobody can bring it. You can bring it like nobody's business. And God, we thank you that you are daily loading us with benefits. We are, and we came out of Egypt loaded Hallelujah. We're going into conquest land. We're going to have, we, we thought we were loaded until we got into Canaan's land. Then we found out there's unlimited supply there. Unlimited resources there. And Father, we give you praise that the Holy Ghost is in charge. The Holy Ghost is leading and guiding us. We think that wisdom is in play as well. Knowledge and understanding is in play well. God, we give you praise right now. That we just have to jubilate and joy and rejoice. Wisdom rejoices before God as he creates. We just have to rejoice and praise and, gl and glorify your name. And watch you do it. And be patient in tribulation. 
Hallelujah. Just be patient in tribulation and rejoice and pray always. Hallelujah. And God, we give you the praise right now that it's all done in Jesus Christ. He said it is finished. Every transaction goes to the cross. Hallelujah. And we benefit from it all in Jesus' name. Um, there you have it. Uh, click the like button. Click the share button if you want to sow right now. Get a seed in the ground and just uh, uh, put in. I've got a couple of um, places where you can sow seeds. Uh, one of them is, well, I just sold out it the other day. What is it? Uh, Cash App. Cash App. If you've got Cash App, you can sow right now on Cash App. Just put in SS Riprock, S S R I P R O C K. You can sow to me in this ministry at, at Cash App, or you can go to uh, Zelle on your smartphone, download Zelle, and right there you can uh, send a seed immediately. Just put in 469 335 3356, or you can just go to Dallas Revival Center, click on the hyperlink, uh, PayPal me hyperlink. You don't even have to be a member of PayPal to sow there, or you can just go and sow a seed on our P.O. Box. Dallas Revival Center, 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227. And uh, make your checks payable uh, uh, and your, your money orders payable to UAWOMI. UAWOMI. Bye-bye for now. God bless God's best. In Jesus' name.